Potato. It's midday, it's decision day for Jacinda Ardern, who'll be announcing her new cabinet lineup in an hour. But there's already been a surprise twist. Two days till the US elections, both candidates are blitzing the battleground states as the country is on course for its highest voter turnout numbers in a century. As fireworks go on sale across the country today, firefighters say they don't want a repeat of last year's Guy Fawkes. We'll bring you their message. It's a big day at Parliament. Jacinda Ardern will be announcing the new cabinet this afternoon. She'll be naming her ministers and revealing who has what portfolio. But there's already been drama around the Deputy Prime Minister role, with Labor's Calvin Davis pulling out of the race this morning. Political editor Jessica Much Mackay joins us now from Wellington. Kia ora, Jess. Kia ora Chris, Calvin Davis has told us that he wants to stay on as Deputy Leader of the Labour Party but that he doesn't want to become Deputy Prime Minister. He wants to leave that spot open for somebody else. Now it is an unusual move. Traditionally the Deputy Leader of the Party goes on to get that coveted Deputy Prime Minister spot. Of course there was the exception last time because Winston Peters negotiated that role as part of his deal with Jacinda Ardern. It is a highly sought after job, it's a prestigious title, it's basically your job to fill in for the Prime Minister when she's away from Wellington, when she's in the debating chamber, to front to the media on her behalf and also when she's overseas as well. In terms of, of what Calvin Davis has had to say, he says that he let the Prime Minister know that he didn't want this job before the election, she told him to go away and think about it. But here's what he told us this morning. From the outset, the Prime Minister has said that it is my decision and my decision alone. Uh, but I came into politics for two reasons, one to represent Te Tai Tokoro and the other uh, to make a difference for Māori. And uh, that's what I've been doing and that's what I'll continue to do. So Jess, when do we hear the rest of the names? 1 p.m. So just under an hour's time, we'll get the list of names that will come out. There's less speculation around roles like the finance portfolio, but more speculation when it comes to things like education and health, for example. And of course, there will be some new ministers to add to the mix as well. Don't forget, these are the people who will be sitting at that top cabinet table. They will be making the big decisions on behalf of New Zealanders. So it is a big deal what will be announced at one o'clock here this afternoon. All right. Thanks for the update, Jessica. Much Mikhail, live for us from Parliament. Meanwhile, now that the Greens deal is done, the party's co-leaders are dismissing claims that the new cooperation agreement with Labour puts the party in a weak position. 85% of the party's delegates supported the agreement, which puts each of the co-leaders in ministerial roles outside of Cabinet. Though James Shaw says the Greens will still make their policy stance clear. We are actually able to record and to state that our um, party's position would have been different mm. from where the government line was. And so what it does, it allows us to walk out of the cabinet room and to say, look, cabinet's made the following decision. Um, that does vary from our policy in the following ways. And if that's important to you, then obviously you'd have a chance at the next election to express that. In a rare appearance, the country's top lawyer has today fronted the Royal Commission of Inquiry into Abuse in State Care. Una Jagors, who is representing the Crown at the hearings, has acknowledged the suffering of survivors who have been sharing evidence over the past months. She admits the Crown have not always been survivor-focused. We'll not try and defend everything that has happened in the last 20 years. There are matters that I readily 